are back for round two of Mock Draft 11. If you haven't seen round one, make sure you do that because this isn't going to make a whole heck of a lot of sense. So with that said, I don't want anyone saying, hey, the Panthers don't pick here. Yeah, dummy, it's because it was traded in round one. Pay attention to what's going on here. Because I can't do a, a recap. By the time we get to round seven, it's going to be four hours of telling you what happened through the last six rounds. you got to be up to date. It can't help you, man, if you're not paying attention. Preliminary stuff, check the description, right? I got NFLMockDraft.com. That is the ultimate big board website. I'm going to be using that in this mock draft because it not only has rankings for I would be willing to bet every single player through this entire seven round mock draft but I got news and notes and everything else so I'm going to be using that as a reference to say is this a good pick or a bad pick and this uh, this mock draft was done in the Facebook group this is not my mock draft I was not even a part of it um, so this was the uh, the Facebook community if you want to get involved in that kind of stuff Join the uh, Facebook group. If you don't know what Facebook group I'm talking about, it's because it's in the description, man. Go check it out. I got all kinds of stuff you need to be looking at in there. But let's get it rocking. With the 33rd pick in the second round of the 2018 NFL Draft, Chris and the Carolina Panthers select Christian Kirk, wide receiver, Texas A&M. So in that trade, I'm not going to go over every single pick, but the Panthers did pick up two second round picks so they they got some uh some pretty good capital and christian kirk i've seen him go in the first round so although according to this big board i got him at like 41 meaning this is a slight reach um i i do think the panthers need more firepower i know some of the panthers fans say we got some good wide receivers i don't know man i'm not a big funchess guy um i'm using pro football focus as a reference which some of you guys hate but whatever i see you guys got some guy named burson who isn't horrible um but first of all, maybe it's because I'm stupid, but I don't even know who that is. So if you're going to hang your hat on we shouldn't get Christian Kirk because we got Burson in the slot, um, I right, man, <laughs> good on you, I guess. But uh, look, they need more firepower. They they need a lot of stuff, right? But you got a bunch of other picks, too. Uh, you need, a, what, a center? No, I, maybe not. I, I'm not going to go down the list here. I think Christian Kirk is a very dynamic wide receiver. Some of these guys that are coming out, I'm seeing him go up, man. He's A lot of these guys, Bucky Brooks and whatnot, coming out with their wide receiver rankings, they got Christian Kirk number two. That doesn't mean he's a round one value necessarily, but, I mean, he, he man, he's a dangerous dude. And the Panthers aren't a stupid team. They're not the kind of team you look at and you say, you know what, he's a dynamic wide receiver, but you got to know how to use him, and I think the Panthers are too stupid. This is this is a playoff caliber team. They know how to use a guy like Christian Kirk. Uh, you got to get Cam Newton some more weapons so he doesn't have to just stand back there. Nope, there's nothing here. I'm going to run and then take another shot to the head. With the 34th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Mitch and the New York Giants select Isaiah Wynn, guard, Georgia. So in the first round, the Giants, they traded way back and ended up getting uh, Chuck Woma Okora for. Um, so clearly they're prioritizing offensive line, which I think is pretty smart. I mean, they, they need a good amount of things, but... Um, you know, I, I keep saying this, but the Giants are a much better team than what they put on the field last year. They got some solid wide receivers. Well, two now, because I think Marshall's pretty much done forever. But um, they, they, they've got wide receivers. They've got a decent quarterback. They have a really good defense that just didn't put up quite as much as they did the year before. Um, but they got to get some offensive line. So they went out and got a tackle. Now they got a guy who's played tackle. But he's probably going to be slid into guard. He could even potentially play center, according to some scouts out there. Um, and, they, and they need a little bit of everything. I mean, I, I guess I don't really know off the top of my head. I feel like Weston Richburg is going to be a free agent. I mean, they could resign him, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly. I'm not going to sit here and do all the research. But you've got some maybe okay, decent guys. Maybe you had somebody on, uh, on. Uh, IR that I'm not paying attention to but look I'm just looking at what you got and I'm not super impressed and you got to get this fixed because it doesn't matter what running back you have it doesn't matter what quarterback or wide receiver you have nothing matters if you don't have an offensive line so Giants go tackle and then Giants go win to get some interior help um, nobody's usually all that happy when you go lineman lineman because they want a sexy pick at some point right give me some give me an edge rusher give me some defense give me a wide receiver or running back give me a quarterback but i think it's just a smart play especially when you know you have a good football team ahead of you and you've got a new regime in there that's going to kind of 
optimize your weapons a little bit, that's great. Get some offensive line to help out this team. With the 31st, 35th, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Andrew with the Browns select Jair Alexander, cornerback, Louisville. Now, we're, we're still reaching a little bit, and I haven't seen anybody really get a solid value. I don't hate the pick. But I still got guys in the top 32 that are sitting on the board, so we're we're just we're still kind of reaching a little bit. But uh, the Browns so far to recap quickly got Saquon, then they got Baker Mayfield, then they got um, Marcus Davenport. So three really good, really important picks. You got your quarterback. You have a freakish running back now. You've got one of the better wide receivers if he can stay clean on your team. You have a decent offensive line. Uh, you add another pass rusher who has an incredible amount of upside, and now you're looking to fix your biggest uh, weakness, which is your uh, cornerback position with Jair Alexander. So it's a smart pick. All these picks are smart picks, but you know, ultimately, especially when you're a team that uh, needs a lot of stuff, I think you got to just go for value. Take the best player on the board. Maybe this is the best player on Andrew's board, but I feel like he's reaching for need, and... Um, I don't know. I think in the long run, that's the kind of strategy that's going to hurt you a little bit. But uh, we'll see how this plays out. So far, in terms of finding good positions and good players at good positions, I feel like every single one of these players is going to come in and help out the team. With the 36th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Justin and the Colts select Ronnie Harrison, safety, Alabama. So this is the exact opposite, and I'm going to just refute everything I just said a second ago. Ronnie Harrison's a good value. I got him at 31. So not necessarily a first-round grade, but in the top 32 in terms of talent, great value. The question now is, first of all, you need to get some offensive line. However, I don't think he should have taken offensive line here because there is no value unless you reach, and I don't think the Colts should be reaching. So very smart on his part because he absolutely knows. And by the way, in the first round, they got Bradley Chubb. I always have them trading back because I want them getting offensive line. They decided not to do that or at least weren't able to do that. So now you're in a situation, round two is over for them. They don't have any offensive line. But smart, take a good player, and if you have to, hit it in free agency, right? If this is life or death, you go out and pay for somebody. Here's the biggest problem I have, though. What are you going to do with them? Now, I'm assuming you can't use them at free safety because you, you've got this Matthias Farley guy who's playing there that's really good. You just went out and got Malik Hooker, who is a free safety, um, assuming neither of these guys can play strong safety, I'm thinking you have to put Ronnie Harrison at strong safety. Now, you can upgrade there, but you've got decent players there. So, I don't know. I, I guess that's kind of subjective. Maybe you think they suck, but you got youth and you have talent at the safety position. But, I mean, this is just straight up best player available, in my opinion. Ronnie Harrison was a first round player who slid into the second round. Highest player on your board. Go out and get him. Um, I mean, especially if you really like them. I mean, we're talking about average to decent players as opposed to filling in dire needs. We're looking at just going out and getting the best guys and plugging them in. So it's another one of those things where you look at it and go, well, we're just going to test this best player available philosophy. You got the Browns who reached for a player that they need, and you got the Colts who went back and got the best value at a position that isn't their biggest need. So. I don't know. You got to wait until the season starts to see how that works out because, you know, everybody screams and kicks and moans or whatever, and then somebody busts out their knee and this guy comes in and, and tears it up and gets you into the playoffs because you had him, right? That's, I don't know. That's the stuff that happens. That's why best player available makes sense. You can't try to fix the 2017 team. You got to look at 2018 and beyond, right? That's the main thing with best player available, according to me, because I am all knowing. With the 37th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Drayton and the Jets select Mike Hughes, cornerback, UCF. Now, I feel like a lot of people are going to stand up and cheer like, oh, man, they got to steal. Mike Hughes is like a top 15 guy. I have him ranked number 50 on my big board. The highest any website out there has him ranked that I can see outside of uh, – Daniel Jeremiah, who thinks he's like a, a freakish guy. Or Which, by the way, the whole reason anybody's talking about Mike Hughes is because of Der Daniel Jeremiah. Nobody else cares about Mike Hughes. But anyways, the highest outside of him that I could find anywhere is 25th. 
and I see them ranked as low as 108. So in my book, as of right now, and these things are going to keep changing, I'm going to keep updating the big board. Maybe everyone's going to fall all over Daniel Jeremiah and try to fall in line, whatever. We'll see who the real opinion people are and how many people out there are just following everybody else. But um, right now, this is a huge reach. Um, now, it is a position of need, and obviously some people really like him, so it's possible that Drayton's just like, you know, I watched him. I love him. He's my guy. He's a first-round pick. He fell way too far. He's going to come in. He's going to dominate. They absolutely... I mean, the Jets need a little bit of everything. So best player available has got to be your thing. But from my opinion, you got your quarterback now. You got Josh Rosen, right? Huge piece. Um, and now you got a corner, which you need quite a few of those. Um, but just from my perspective, this is a, a massive reach. So I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't like it because I think it's it's way too early for Hughes. But uh, there's no question in my mind that Drayton looks at this as, and sees Hughes as a, you know, like a top 20 guy at least that fell. So uh, agree to disagree on this one. With the 38th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Ethan and the Bucks select Tavares McFadden, cornerback out of FSU. This is almost the exact same situation as the Jets. Um, Tavares is ranked like 51. I'm a big boy. He used to be like a big name, first round draft pick guy, but he just keeps on sliding. Right now, I have him just slightly later than Hughes. Um, I mean, we're we're almost to 40, so I mean, we're not talking about like an entire round reach necessarily, but we're talking about like 10, 15 guys too early. And again, we still got like first round, early second round guys. There's a ton of good value out there. Um, and I know this is difference of opinion, right? My big board is not the all-knowing everything. Um, but just according to what I'm looking at, I think it's a little early for Tavares McFadden. They do need corner, but they need a lot of stuff, man. You need defensive line. You need edge. You could use some offensive line. You could use linebacker. You could upgrade in other areas. I mean, it's not like, man, if we just had this one corner, we'd be set. So there, there's plenty of areas where you could go out and get value and be doing all right. I feel like this is a, a need pick, right? We need a corner. Who's the best corner available? In my opinion, it's Tavares. Maybe it's a little reach, but I don't really care. Um, I don't know. I think it's a little early, um, but we'll see how it pans out, I guess. I mean, we won't because it didn't actually happen, but, you know, that that's the mentality I would have, assuming this was a real thing. Like, you know, you know I don't like it, but we'll see. With the 39th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Clark and the Bears back on the clock select Anthony Miller, wide receiver, Memphis. So third pick in a row, and we're basically going right in line. I got him like 53, so it was like 50, 51, 53. I think these guys are going a little too early, but I, I don't hate it. I do have some wide receivers that I think there's like three of them still on the board. Uh, this is like number three of three, so there's, I think, maybe two better value wide receivers. In my opinion, obviously Clark disagrees. He likes Anthony Miller, maybe thinks it's a great fit for the Bears. Um, obviously need a, a huge need at wide receiver. I think they took uh, value in round one. They got uh, Tremaine Edmonds. Uh, I asked the question, I don't know if that's a huge need. You know, you got some decent linebackers. It's one of the things the Bears do have. But you're taking best player available, and we're talking, you know, he's getting compared to Brian Urlacher, right? So it basically, round one, you're saying, I'd love to get a wide receiver, but I've got this freakish guy that I am just madly in love with that's going to be just the centerpiece of our our defense for years to come. we got to pull the trigger on this guy. So that's what they did in round one. Now we're thinking, okay, now we got to address wide receiver. Anthony Miller's top of their board, not top of mine. Once again, agree to disagree on this one. Clark taking Anthony Miller, but a second-round guy, a talented wide receiver, and uh, somebody to help, uh, you know, Mitch Trubisky and this this offense get going a little bit. With the 40th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Chris and the Broncos select James Washington, wide receiver, Oklahoma State. Now that's what I'm talking about, man. Now now I'm feeling good. I I, I think. Um, Chris with the Broncos right now is, is kind of killing it. He's in round one, they stayed at six and got Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold is, I mean, some people have him ranked number one overall in this draft. 
I would say most people see him as the top quarterback in this draft, and he slid. How often does a top quarterback in a draft fall all the way to a quarterback-starved team at pick six? And then in round two, you get James Washington, who I have currently ranked number 28, which means he is a first-round wide receiver who slid to them at pick 40. Um, By the way, two wide receivers have gone before them. I mean, you could say a lot of this is luck, but... um, Whatever it is, Chris is just killing it right now. You, you get your quarterback, and then you get him a wide receiver. Um, I think they – what was the news on the Broncos here? They're going to they're gonna keep their wide receivers. Or one, one of the guys was going to walk, but they're going to try to keep them. But uh, anyways, James Washington is going to be another piece. Uh, they're they're going to be looking to get rid of one or two of these guys uh, in the relatively near future. But they've got a great wide receiving core now. And um, in terms of, of talent, let me just – Read just this is this is what you get on the website, man. Found James Washington. He's highlighted in red. That means he's got a link. You click on it. News and notes. Uh, Tony Pauline listed Washington as the number one draft ri- wi- riser of all wide receivers after the Senior Bowl. Here's what he had to say: Several receivers helped themselves in Mobile, including Braxton Berrios, Deshaun Hamilton, DJ Chark. But Washington stole the show. Despite, despite measuring just shy of 5'11", a full inch shorter than his listed height with the Cowboys, Washington impressive 33 and 7 8 inch arms helped make up for the lack of height, and he dominated Tuesday's practice to get his week off to a blazing start. He used his hand well to separate early in routes, was lightning quick out of route breaks, and attacked the ball aggressively in the air at all levels of the field. His yards after the catch, prowess, and ball tracking skills were also on display, and while he had occasional struggles at the line against press coverage, his overall body of work at the Senior Bowl may have pushed him into the back of the end of round one, which is exactly where I have him ranked at 28. I'm just telling you, man, I think it was a very, very good pick by the Broncos. With the 41st pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Ryan and the Raiders select Leighton Vander Esch, linebacker, Boise State. So, man, I'm I'm so torn every time Ryan picks with the Raiders because in the first round he made a horrible trade, but then he fell to the back of the first and still got Denzel Ward, who I have ranked like number eight overall. So it ended up working out beautifully. So I'm thinking, man, you know what? (laughs) Don't ever do that stuff again. Now in the second round, he picks Leighton Vander Esch, which, according to the big board, um, is a massive reach. He's currently ranked 68th overall. However, a little caveat. First of all, it's, it's definitely a need. You've got Navarro Bowman, who is a freak show, very, very good linebacker, but you need another one. Leighton Vander Esch is flying up the draft board. I got him at 68 rich not right now, which makes him an early third-round pick. Um... But this is a guy that nobody talked about. He's flying up the board really lightning quick. I would not be surprised by draft time if he is a very good value here. He's another guy that I'm starting to hear consistently people saying, you know who he reminds me of? Brian Urlacher. So the fact that two people in this draft are Brian Urlacher I think is a little silly. But um, I don't know. As it stands right now, I'm going to stand by my big board. I'm going to say it's too early. It's not a great pick. But I think if, if, if I'm Ryan and I'm being honest, and I'm thinking this is draft day. I'm thinking Leighton Van Der Esch is going to continue flying up the board. I think his stock is going to continue to keep going up. Um, obviously, the combine is going to change a lot of that. You know, it's going to how he performs there could really help or hurt his draft stock. But I would not be surprised if come draft time, this is a uh, a very good pick. But at this point, I'm saying it's a reach, man. I'm saying it's a reach. With the 42nd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select. Martinez Rankin, offensive tackle, Mississippi State. So I, I got him at 44. This is 42. I think it's a good value. I think, uh, you know, you know, Rankin's a need, but everything's a need for this team. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't hate it. Um, if you have a potential left tackle that is available, that is a good value, I don't hate taking that. Um, but, man, I, I'm as I look at Miami... I don't know what you I don't know how you're not the first pick in the draft next year. If if there was a gambling site where you could bet on uh who drafts where, I would probably make a lot of money on that pick cuz you guys have nothing. Nothing. First of all, you have Jay Ajayi, you give him away, he goes and wins a Super Bowl. You've got Indomitian Sue who it was never a good move to pick him up. That was always stupid. I don't care how good he is because you're paying him way too much money. So now you realize that. So at the peak 
when he is an elite football player, you're saying we can't afford him, we got to let him go. So he's gone. Cameron Wake is 400 years old. He's on the way out. Landry is your one good wide receiver. He's on the way out because he's too expensive. You have nothing. You don't have a left tackle. You don't have a left guard. You don't have a center. You don't have a right guard. You don't have a right tackle. You don't have a tight end. You don't have any good wide receivers. You don't have a quarterback. You don't really have a running back. You got Drake, but I don't think he's even a three down back. You don't have a defensive line anymore. You don't have good corners. You don't have good linebackers. And you maybe got decent safeties. You have nothing on this team of value. Nothing. I may be exaggerating a little bit, but you, this team is just crap. It is so bad, man. I don't mean to, to, to pile it on you. I just want to make sure you're aware in case you're a Miami Dolphins fan and you're thinking Super Bowl or any other kind of stupid stuff. Dude, be prepared because if things don't turn around quick, I mean, you, you, listen, I, I said I don't hate the pick, but who is your offensive tackle protecting? <laughs> who is he blocking for? You got nothing, man. You got Roquan Smith in the first round. I mean, that's awesome. That's cool. I think it was a little bit of a reach, but, you know, he's supposed to be a great football player, but he can't do everything by himself, so that's a piece. And I guess it makes sense you get your offensive line first, then you get your quarterback, rather than getting a quarterback, letting him get killed, and then try to protect him after his uh, confidence is shattered. So we're just in complete rebuild mode, and we're doing a decent job, starting with linebacker and then getting tackles and whatever, but... This is going to be a long process. Unless you guys hit it out of the park with some coaching, with some great draft picks, and then kill it in free agency, this team is just in a lot of trouble. Because I see, I see nothing of value here. Nothing of value on this team. I'm sorry, was that mean? I'm just I'm just in, in awe. I don't know how you guys won, t- won games last year with Cutler. I, don't, I just, I don't know. I don't know how that even happened. With the 43rd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Mason Rudolph, quarterback, Oklahoma State. So I think it's a good value. Um, I, I, the only reason I don't like the pick is because everyone's trying to force a quarterback on this team, and Tom Brady's going to play until he's 55 years old. So it's going to end up being a wasted pick. It's just Plus, I just don't like Mason Rudolph at all. I don't think he's a... I don't know. Maybe maybe anybody that steps foot on the Patriots field is just going to be a freak, and we just have to accept that because they have a magical football field. They got these running backs that have never done anything in their career, and they come to the Patriots, and all of a sudden they're top five running backs. I don't, I don't know how any of these things happen, so maybe it just doesn't matter. Whoever they pick, we just got to say, great pick by the Patriots because we know they're just going to be awesome. right? Brady's going to get hurt or suspended for a game or two. He's going to come in. He's going to win every single game. And I don't know. I don't know, man. It's just the Patriots, man. It just is what it is. It's just the Patriots. With the 44th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Peter and the Redskins select Sony Michel, running back, Georgia. You know, after all this time, you think I'd go out and try to learn how to say his name, but I just have such a good time calling him Sony Michel. I don't even care because I'm going to find out something's wrong. I'm pretty sure it's Sony. Um, but if it's not, I definitely don't want to change that because it reminds me of Sony PlayStation and everything else. Uh, and Michelle reminds me of uh, Dodgeball, the big giant dude uh, who was, had a girly name. So it's just funnier to say Sony Michelle, and I don't want to be heartbroken and find out that's not how you say his name. So in the first round, they went out and got Deron Payne, and, and I think in both cases that you got guys that there's a lot of question marks about, right? Deron Payne, I don't want to say question marks like maybe he sucks, but there's there's some people who think Deron Payne is like a top 10 guy. Some people are like, I don't know, he's like a second round dude. He's definitely not a first round because I don't know if he can run, pass, pass rush or rush, rush the passer, whichever you prefer. And Mr. Sony Michel, I currently have ranked 64th, meaning this is a massive, um, a huge risk, right? Like barely second round, we're talking maybe early third round. Um, candidate but some people love him right he's the Tariq kill of this year he's gonna be a freak he's gonna light it up uh, a lot of risk man this is the kind of thing that a gm is gonna pull the trigger on a guy that uh is is valued not quite this high a lot of contention this is gonna be some something that in your meetings in your boardroom they're gonna some, be some people saying we should not be taking him this early but you're gonna live and die by this pick because if he tears it up you're a genius if he's terrible you're an idiot so um, it's it's a position of need. Deron Payne was a position of need. Both very talented people. These could be two home run hits that make you look like one of the better GMs. 
these could both suck and your team is just terrible because you need these positions to hit. Um, so I like it, man. I like the gutsiness. Maybe he doesn't think he's being gutsy and he got two great values. I would disagree. Um, but I'm, I'm going to call it gutsy, and I'm going to say I kind of like it. According to the big board, stupid, but I kind of like it. With the 45th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Brandon and the Green Bay Packers select Equinemius St. Brown, wide receiver, Notre Dame. So if I didn't have my big board, I'd be looking at it and going, yeah, all right, I could see it, right? You know, Jordy's kind of getting close to on the way out. Randall's potentially very likely on the way out this year. Um, you know, we, we got to get some youth. We got to get some size. We got to get some people. Okay. Problem is, the all-knowing big board has him ranked like 197th. Not even kidding. This I don't know what happened. Nobody likes this guy anymore. There's probably got to be five or six wide receivers already ahead of this guy, not to mention three or four that are have like a third-round grade. 197 is like we're talking day three candidate. So I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, and we'll see what happens um, as more and more grades come out and as things change and as the combine is going to have a huge impact on this. But as it stands, I got to say it, terrible pick. Got to say, I mean, obviously he disagrees, but I don't know, man. I think the, the equanimity of St. Brown hype train has completely derailed at this point. With the 46th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Damian and the Bengals select Brian O'Neill tackle Pittsburgh. So there's no question the Bengals need offensive line help. Uh, they went out and got Josh Jackson in round one, uh, meaning their biggest need hasn't been met yet. And in my opinion, they need it, so they're reaching for it. On our big board, we have uh, him ranked 80th. The note on him, however, says, Tony. according to Tony Pauline, most teams do have a second-round grade. So I'm, I'm not going to say it's a terrible pick. Obviously, listen, the, the big board is an aggregator from like 15 different websites right now. So it's, it's not, some, some people love them, some people hate them. But average it out, you got about 80. So same thing is true with teams, right? He says most teams have a second-round grade. Some might have a third, some might have a fourth, whatever it is, like them or hate them. Um, I don't know from Damien necessarily because I don't have any notes. Maybe in his opinion, he, this is a steal value. But in my opinion, I'm seeing a team that's saying, we didn't address our biggest need in round one. We have to address it now. Who's my favorite tackle on the board or offensive lineman? In their opinion, it's Brian O'Neill. I'm just I'm going to say that it's a need, but it's a reach. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that. With the 47th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Jordan and the Cardinals select... Dante Jackson, cornerback out of LSU. So, I don't know. I got him ranked like 70th, and this is pick 47, so we're calling it a reach. Um, I think cornerback is maybe the only position that the Cardinals don't really need. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but you got Tremont Williams, you got Teron Matthew, and you've got uh, Patrick Peterson out there, right? So, I mean, you need offensive line. You need a quarterback desperately. You need You need everything out there. So reaching on a corner. Now, again, I say reach. I have to assume Jordan's looking at this saying Dante is the best player available. That's why I'm taking him. I just disagree. So I'm saying you're reaching on a position that you do not need. So from from what I have available to me, I don't like anything about this pick. You don't need a corner, and he's not a good value. So there's nothing for me to like. Um, that's all I got, man. With the 48th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Ryan and the Chargers select Deshaun Elliott, safety out of Texas. So, exact same situation, man. I have uh, Deshaun Elliott ranked 99th on the all-knowing big board. Big-time reach, uh, position that just, I mean, he's going to sit on the bench. So in the second round, you take a third or fourth round player and you put him on the bench. That's the reality of the situation. Um... I mean, even if you think he's the best player available, man, just skip that guy and get somebody else. You need a defensive lineman, right? You got a tackle in the first round. <sighs> I don't know. I, I feel like this team is close. You need a couple more pieces. Get some of those pieces, man. And the, and there's so much. Va somebody on here is just gonna get a huge steal at at one of because 
I mean, you got first and second, early second round talent still available, and you got guys reaching on guy third and fourth round players. There's so much value sitting there. Somebody's just going to knock this thing out of the park. So, I don't know. Uh, not not a huge fan of that one. Uh, you know, a lot of people do like Deshaun though. He's being talked about a lot. I can't say that second round, mid second round, is un, unusual for a mock draft or even early second round. Probably some crazy people saying first round. But I'm just looking at it saying Chargers don't need a safety. And according to the majority of the most reputable websites out there, he is currently ranked 99th overall. So it is what it is, man. With the 49th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Drayton and the Jets select Sam Hubbard, edge rusher, Ohio State. So Sam Hubbard I have ranked 33rd on the old big board. Um, The Jets could use an edge rusher, so I... I think it's just a really good pick. Um, the only question I do have, in my opinion, I see Sam Hubbard as a 4-3 guy. I don't know exactly where he would be in a 3-4 system. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, but that would just be my one concern. Otherwise, uh, I think it's just another really good pick for the Jets. With the 50th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, we have our first trade in the second round. And once again... We got the Falcons, and they're going to trade with the Dallas Cowboys who are on the clock. Now, if you remember in round one, the Falcons traded from the back of the first all the way up to round three, and I wanted to strangle them because that's psycho. Um, One of my least favorite things in the entire draft, and now he's doing it again. I feel like Dex's whole thing is trades, and he's a trade junkie, and he's got to get his fix. Here's the situation, though. I think he knocked the pick out of the park. So let's get this out of the way. With the 50th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Deck and the Falcons select Taven Bryan, defensive tackle, Florida. Now here's the trade details. The Falcons move up to 50. They give the Cowboys 58, 122, and a 2019 fourth. Now the obvious question is, do they even need defensive line? And you could look at this and go, I don't like Taven Bryan. This dude's trading too much. He comes up and he gets a position we don't need. Here's the thing. I have Taven Bryan ranked 21st. 21st. So this is a situation where you're looking at it and you're going, look, I don't feel like we need this guy necessarily. Although, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't think he's a Don Terry Poe fit, but he's going to be on the way out. Um, so we are going to be getting a little more thin along the defensive line. And you need more than one defensive lineman, two, three. You know, you know it's a rotational thing. These big fat dudes get tired. You got to rotate them in and out. You got situational stuff, whatever. Point is, this is a situation where I actually see value in trading. And I don't know if I've ever actually seen this happen before in a trade because usually it's just, I want that guy, I'm going to go up and get him, even though he's basically at a good value. This is a guy whose value is skyrocketing, right? As soon as we get to pick 22, his value starts going up higher and higher and higher. What pick are we on right now, for crying out loud? We're on pick 50. So the Falcons are sitting there, and I, maybe this isn't his thought process. He's just like, man, I want to trade. Let me in, man. I need some of that trade stuff, man. I don't know what the situation is, but from my perspective, they're looking at this going, look, this guy is a freak. He's a first-round guy. Uh, he should have been gone a long time ago. Can we move up and get him? So I'm looking from that perspective. Maybe I'm giving him too much credit, but um, potential steal of the draft here. Mid-first-round guy. And the Falcons move up and get him in uh, the mid-second round range. I like that a lot. And I hope I see more of that. Just just identifying talent and saying we got to go up and get him. It's not about need. It's about this guy's value is unbelievable right here. And if we can get him, we're going to knock this thing out of the park. That, that just excites me, man. I'm into that kind of stuff. You know, I'm just kind of weird like that. With the 51st pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Mitchell and the Lions select Carrion Johnson, running back Auburn. So a little torn on this pick. Um, first of all, just looking at it, in the uh, first round, the Lions got Quentin Nelson, which is crazy, right? They they traded way up. They got a freakish guard, and uh, now they go out and get maybe their biggest need, which is a running back. The problem I have is his value. You know, I, I love getting Quentin Nelson and then getting a running back because they absolutely need it. But uh, on Johnson, I currently have at 74, so not my favorite value. 
But he, he's another guy uh, similar to Vander Esch that's flying up the board, and it's very possible that at, at, at draft time this guy's seen as a very good value here. Um, but again, at this point, i got to look at it and say, I don't hate you for the pick because it makes a lot of sense, right? You get your guard to help your run game. You get your running back to help your run game. Now you have a run game. That's awesome. Um, so it might be a slight reach, but I don't hate you for it. Actually, it's a pretty massive reach. It's a third-round guy, but you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it pans out. With the 52nd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Michael and the Ravens select Ogbonia Okoronkwo, edge rusher, Oklahoma. So got him ranked like 60th, a little bit of a reach, but it's a premium position. It's a position of need for the Ravens. They went out and got a wide receiver in round one to help their offense. Now they get, uh, you know, I don't know if you want to call him a centerpiece, but a potentially uh, very good pass rusher in the second round. I'm um, not going to overly analyze it. I think Ogbania is a guy that you can really, you know, really like. So the fact that it's a, what is it, a 10, 10 spot reach or whatever, I I don't care, man. Some people probably got like a early second round grade on this guy. Ravens need him. Ravens got him. I don't hate it. With the 53rd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Bryson and the Bills are back on the clock. And I, I got to just real quick, I want to recap this because Bryson knocked this thing out of the park, in my opinion. With the 22nd and 23rd picks, they got Josh Allen and Maurice Hurst. That just got me all kinds of excited inside. But with the 53rd pick, the Bills select Deion Kane, wide receiver out of Clemson. Now, according to the magical, mystical big board, it's a reach. We got like a, I think it was 71. It's it's amazing because I look it up right before I start talking, and then within 10 seconds I forget the number. But it was 70 something, which makes it a reach, right? We're talking second or third round, excuse me. However, wide receiver is a big need, right? You got this awesome Aaron Donald wannabe uh, defensive tackle. You got a early first round quarterback that falls all the way down to the end of the first round, and Josh Allen. He is your new quarterback, and now you get him a wide receiver. I don't agree with Deion Kane being your man, but if Deion Kane is your guy, go get your guy, man. I'm fine with it. With the 54th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs are back on the clock. However, we have our second trade of the evening. Brandon and the Packers are going to trade up to get into pick 54, and here's what we got. They're giving the Chiefs Jordy Nelson. <laughs> So I told you in the in the last video there's a lot of player trades which I think is kind of silly. I also don't like it because I don't know how to gauge it. I don't I don't know what to do with it. Teams don't really do it very often. I don't know how you put a valuation on it. But here's kind of how my thought process went as I tried to process this before I get to the pick really quick. Jordy Nelson I think is coming back and I think if anything Randall Cobb's going to go, but Randall Cobb's younger. Jordy Nelson's just on his way out. If you're going to offload him, what the Packers would normally do, they let him walk. Some other team picks him up, and then they get a third-round, fourth-round compensatory pick. In this case, they're giving him to the Chiefs, and they're getting a second-round pick. So in terms of how the contract shakes out and all that, there's got to be a reason this isn't done more often. So I'm thinking this is not good, but I don't know exactly what that reason is, so somebody's got to let me know. Again, I don't really read the comments section anymore, so if you want to tell me, get in the Facebook group and send me a message. I'll listen. Just tell me why this never happens, because it seems to make sense. But I gotta be rational about it and say I don't think this would ever happen. But anyways, with the 54th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Brandon and the Packers select Mark Andrews, tight end, Oklahoma. So phenomenal. Again, it's another trade that I really like because it's a phenomenal value, uh, and it's a huge, huge need. I mean, Mark Andrews is typically mocked in the first round. Big props to this group for not reaching on him because he's, I think he's overhyped. I think he goes, you know like pick 24 or whatever, and and I have him currently ranked 42. But he did fall a little bit, and the Packers identified this, and they said, look, man, we need a tight end desperately. And, and, you know, Mark Andrews, we're not going to reach. The Packers aren't a team that are going to reach on people, but he's he's a guy whose value is shot through the roof, and we need him bad. So I don't know if Jordy Nelson's going to be what we trade. We have draft picks. We have draft capital. Maybe he's just being overly creative. I don't know. But in terms of just forget who the pieces were, the Packers trading back into this second round and getting Mark Andrews um, to help Aaron Rodgers and, and finally get a, a solid tight end. I just Let me tell you something. If Brandon wanted to run for governor of Wisconsin, he's doing a great job. He's got Arden Key. He's got a big 
huge wide receiver, and then he gets Mark Andrews. I don't know if I agree with Equinemius quite so much, but I guarantee you Packer Nation's going nuts. They love Arden Key, they want wide receivers, and they absolutely would just, well, we won't get too graphic, but they'd get very excited about Mark Andrews. With the 55th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Chris and the Panthers, with their second of three picks in the second round, select... Durant's Armstrong, edge rusher out of Kansas. So again, they traded out of the first round so that they can get pick 33 and 64, and I think they got something else as well. But when you do something like that, you got to kill it in the second round. So that's what they're trying to do. They went and got Christian Kirk with pick 33, dynamic, scary, wide receiver. And by the way, you got, you've got you already got uh, Christian McCaffrey, who's got, you know, there, there's stuff you can do with them right? There's these pieces that you can do crazy stuff with because they're real elusive and whatever. Now you got Christian Kirk, plus you have a quarterback that can take off and run. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that you got people on their toes. And if you get creative enough, you can really do some damage with this team right now. Um, I think Durant's is a good uh, value here. Let me look real quick. We're on pick 55, and I've got Durant's at 58. So it's it's a, a, a great spot for him to go overall. Uh, do the Panthers need him? I would say that they do you know you got Julius Peppers I don't know if he's I think he's going to be a free agent I don't know if they're going to re-sign him he was okay um Mario Addison is a solid football player but he's also getting up in age so you want to get a little more youth I think it's a good value I think it's a good pick it's obviously a premium position so I'm 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 very very okay with this pick if it's a thing to be very very okay that's what I am with the 56th pick in the 2018 NFL draft Bryson and the Bills back on the clock with their fourth pick select Isaiah Oliver cornerback out of Colorado so I've already said I really like what the uh with what Bryson's doing with the Bills here I loved his first round Dion makes a lot of sense but it's a little bit of a reach and now this is the exact opposite pick do you need Isaiah Oliver I think if he can play in the slot it's a great pick but in terms of value oh my goodness man um 34 so almost a first round pick so he he went out and just said you know what i'm gonna get the best value available he might be the best player on on the board right now um so i mean as i'm looking at this and i'd love to go back there's a lot of people doing i think some really awesome things i think uh chris with the broncos and a couple other people really just doing an awesome job but if if i'm an owner of a team and i'm saying who's going to be your gm i don't know man bryson's got me going a little bit he's getting me fired up now it's it's easy when you got great players falling to you but you got to know where to pull the trigger right you got a lot of guys there's great value available and they probably need corners and they're drafting fourth round guys right it's about when the talent falls who do you pull the trigger on i don't know i I think uh, i think bryson's doing a real good job with the bills here bills fans might look at it and say we don't need corner that's stupid he's an idiot i think it's a great value and uh i i I, you know what, what do you got two good corners over there is that all you want that all you need come on man come on man with the 57th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Dylan and the Titans select Harrison Phillips, defensive tackle, Stanford. Another another great pick. I think uh, Harrison Phillips is a phenomenal value. I got him at like 42 or on pick 57. Is it a need? I would say that it is. Now, the, the Titans are kind of a, uh, a weird team to where you, you don't look at their team and say, man, there's some dire needs. Maybe there's a couple. In a lot of teams, there's a lot of dire needs, but with this team, it's it's everybody's just kind of okay, right? Average to pretty good kind of thing. So any any pick you could look at and say, well, we don't really need it, but at the same time, just about every pick you could upgrade, right? There, there's you know obviously you're going to keep Marcus Mariota and whatnot, but uh, defensive line I would say is serviceable, but could absolutely be upgraded. But it's a good position to be in because you just get to take the best player available and realize that we have have a good team. We have the ability to develop these guys, and eventually they could become very, very good starters. So who is the best player? Who has the ability to upgrade a position? So you take a really good value player. Harrison Phillips should have been gone by now. Dylan pulls the trigger on him. I like the pick a lot. With the 58th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Brian and the Cowboys, who remember traded back with Atlanta, select Carlton Davis, cornerback, Auburn. I, I tell you what, man, if you're going to draft at the end of these these rounds, you better be good with uh, with what you're doing. And I, I'm loving a lot of these picks. Carlton Davis, I got ranked 37th, early second round guy. Um, is it their biggest need? Probably not. But they got Vita Vea in the first, which is going to help out their defensive line. 
Corner's kind of tricky for the Cowboys because they have a ton of youth and a lot of upside, right? A lot of promise, right? A lot of first round guys that, that did okay. Chidobia Wuzier was pretty good. Um, I, I don't remember some of the other, Woods or something like that were average, were okay. So it's potential. It's it's possible that these guys all take another step and you're set and this just wasn't really a worthwhile pick. But in terms of value, you cannot piss piss on. Good Lord. You cannot. This is a family show. Come on. You cannot pick pass on Carlton Davis. You can't do that, um, especially since we're just talking about potential and all this other stuff. Look, Carlton Davis is a really flipping good cornerback, man. You got to take him. Love the pick. With the 59th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Brett and the 49ers select Auden Tate, wide receiver, FSU. Now, that's the guy I was thinking of back in the Equinemia St. Brown days. Now, it's it's not all that great. I mean, it, it is a good value. I've, I have him ranked 51. I'm saying back in the 45 range probably wasn't all that good. But anyways, um, 49ers need a wide receiver for their uh, young, talented quarterback that is now the highest paid probably for about another week until Cousins finds a, finds a team but is the highest paid quarterback uh, you better invest in him pretty heavily so make sure that he's protected make sure he, that you guys have a ground game make sure you have some wide receivers start adding those pieces Auden Tate a good value a good piece and a good pick with the 60th pick in the 2018 NFL draft David and the Steelers select Luke Falk quarterback Washington State. I don't like it. I have Luke Falk ranked 114. Um, I understand that you feel like you need to get a quarterback because Roethlisberger isn't going to be around forever. I think you just got to wait a little bit, man. I think you you missed you missed out in the first round. Sometimes that happens. I don't know if there's anybody that's a good value in the second round. It happens. Wait to see if Luke's around in the third or fourth or or somebody that's a better value. Um, in the first round, I think there was a little bit of a reach for Rashawn Evans. I think there's a massive reach for Luke Falk. Um, I think David just needs to relax, take a deep breath, take the best player available, man. It's it's okay. You don't if you don't get a quarterback, it's not the end of. The, there's like 70 people out there that are that are free agents right now that are going to be quarterbacks. Just go go get one and just relax, right? Go get Mark Sanchez like everybody else. Let him play on the bench so you can just not have panic attacks. He can win like two games. Just relax, man. With the 61st pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Alex Kappa, offensive tackle, Humboldt State. So I'm just going to come out and say I don't like the pick at all, um, according to our big board. And granted, once you get past a certain point, you have a lot of websites that don't even have him on their list, right? He's not in the somebody so-and-so's top 100. He's not in so-and-so's top 50. He's not in, in so-and-so's top 250. So he ends up making it on one list. And on that one list, he's ranked 314th. And that's basically the situation we have with Alex Kappa. It doesn't mean that that's exactly where he lands. You know, maybe that on the top 100 list, he would be 104. But wherever you think he is, 61 is way too early. Way too early. NFL.com has him ranked as a fifth-round prospect. According to our big board, which I've just told you what the deficit is with it, he's going undrafted. So... I understand there's been a lot of talk about Kappa, the Senior Bowl. He did some good stuff, and people were impressed by him. I just that's that's too early. I don't I don't, I don't think I've heard anybody ever say second round for Kappa. Maybe maybe potentially third round if he can continue to impress. But um, yeah, I, I just think that's way too early. With the 62nd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Reagan and the Vikings select. J.C. Jackson, cornerback, Maryland. I think it's another reach, man. I got him at 241 on the list. Um, I, I just think, I think it's way too early. I, I liked Orlando Brown in the first. I thought that was a great value for a, a really good tackle at a position of need. But I think here we're just swinging for the fences. Um, I mean, if, if, if he's your guy and you think he's the best player and it's a position of need, go for it. But uh, that not not for my money. Not not any chance. I wouldn't take him second round. I wouldn't take him third round. I probably wouldn't take him fourth round. I just, he's not my guy, man. With the 63rd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Nick Chubb, running back, Georgia. So I, I like the pick. Uh, I have Nick Chubb 
ranked 49th, so I think it's a great value. There's also news that Deion Lewis is probably not going to be with the, the uh, Patriots next year. So I think it's an informed pick. I think it's a good value. I think it's a good need. Um, I just I think it's a very good pick. So uh, good on you, Patriots. And I think that was a group pick, too. I, I've noticed most of these group picks are pretty good picks. So when the brain trust comes together and, and comes together on a pick, this uh, NFL Facebook group that we got going on is is it's got some brain power to it. Finally, with the 64th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, Chris and the Panthers select Frank Ragnow, center, Arkansas. That's Arkansas, if you're an idiot. So according to the big board, he's ranked uh, 60th, which would make it um, a decent value, but um, nothing overly spectacular. However, um, according to Joe Marino, he has Frank listed as one of three centers inside the top 50, which would make him a phenomenal uh, value. So here, here's his note real quick. It says, Ragnow's strength, functional strength makes him an ideal fit for a man-power blocking scheme. There are some technical improvements needed, but is powerful finish but is a powerful finisher with great length. Considering I don't read good, I probably shouldn't read so many notes. So once again, I think that that was another good pick by the Panthers, um, really just taking advantage of all these these wonderful, lovely draft picks that he has. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the finale of round two. We will be back again tomorrow or the next day with round three. We're just, we're just powering through this, man. We're not messing around. I'm not doing all this other nonsense. I said we're going to get through every single day. We're doing mock draft stuff, so... I'm hoping every day or every other day we got another video coming out. We're going to power through this seven-round mock draft, and then I'm going to do my own personal seven-round mock draft. That makes for 14 straight rounds of mock draft madness, if you can handle it. Ladies and gentlemen, have yourselves a fine, fine Friday or whatever the heck day it is when I get this uploaded, and uh, I will be back very soon.